different panel. Um, so I believe I have a nice, it's nice intro for you. So without further ado, please welcome our guest, Greg Berger. Greg Berger brought to life the leader of the Dinobots, Grimlock. Thirty years later, he continues to voice a fan favorite character in both new shows and video games. But his connection to the world of the Transformers does not end there, having voiced other memorable characters such as Skyfire, Long Haul, and Outback. In Greg's thirty year plus career, he has also lent his talents to such notable properties as Metal Gear Solid, Garfield, and Winnie the Pooh. Woo! He is no bozo. He is the king. Please put your hands together for Grimlock himself. It's been a busy morning for a king. <laughs> so, great. Obviously, you're fairly well known, playing quite well. You know, so most people here have heard of Grimlock, yeah? Anyone who's from you? And I'm one of the Eeyores for this. And I'm squeaked them out of Sunday Garfield show, so that's fun. And, uh, Herbert, uh, Harry the Alley Cat, who lives in a garbage can a few doors down because food tastes better after it marinates for a wee bit. And, uh, <laughs> and her the mailman is always afraid to go to the yard buckle house because that cat! <laughs> <laughs> and Odie, brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
department said, what are you doing in the English department? And I said, I guess I'll be a teacher. I don't know, I don't know. He said, don't stop doing what you're doing. But he said, you're exactly the kind of actor that we like to cultivate. He said, please include this in your field of vision moving forward. So I kind of got invited in, and it's not the last time that I've been invited in. Uh, my first agent outside of St. Louis was in Chicago, and I had the luxury of knowing that I was working there, but I always uh, had sort of equal parts of optimism, naivete, stupidity, and I thought I would find out what else was out there. So I went to Los Angeles. Um, Fortunately, I, I began getting cast in plays right away, uh, some TV, uh, some film, so a little bit of everything that I went for. But it was in a play in Los Angeles uh, that I was seen by Gordon Hunt, who was at that time doing all of the voice direction of Hanna-Barbera. He came backstage and said, if you're as versatile as what I just saw on stage, we should know about you at Hanna-Barbera. I got invited in again. That sounded like Eeyore, again. <laughs> I lost my tail, again. Uh, but I got invited in again. Uh, and I had the great good sense in that moment to say, hey, you've had my demo uh, for months. If you can move it to the top of the pile from the bottom of the pile, I would love to be considered for, for what you're doing. When he had me in, he told the story um, He's, at the time that I said, kind of busted him, he said, geez, you've got a lot of nerve, don't you? And I said, normally, no. I can be polite at my own expense. And you, it's all good. It's always good. Um, and I'm a terminal optimist, you know. Uh, it'll kill me someday, but I'll die with a smile on my face. Um, I'm a dream feeder. I'm not a dream killer. When I teach, uh, it's with a complete understanding that they're always looking for what comes next that they don't already have. The mistake a lot of people make aspiring voice actors is uh, they have a reel of things that already exist. Well, those people already exist and they are the go-to. So what you want to focus on, if, if that's uh, a field that you're interested in, is something that's not already at the table. You know, They'll always pay attention to what's new and what's next. Awesome. So you <laughs> give us a little taste of various different characters that you've voiced over the years. Do you have, like, what is your relationship to the characters that, that you play? Are there any that you actually feel you really embody? Or, and how many do you just completely forget about what you've done a couple of lines and then you move on? I am of the opinion that you reach out to the character and the character reaches out to you. And hopefully what you create as something of the core of, of the actor in it, but also allows you to reach out and go someplace you haven't been. Like Cybertron, for example. <laughs> but um, like my children, I can't tell you which is my favorite. They're all <laughs> my favorite and all for different reasons. And sometimes it's the production team, sometimes it's the scripts, sometimes it's just the camaraderie of being in the booth. But I associate all of these experiences with, with different franchises. I mean, how lucky am I? I? I have been entrusted and tasked with uh, continuing the longevity of these characters that have become iconic, and that involves an expert artist, that involves an incredible writer, and then an actor to furnish that third dimension. But I, I see it all as collaborative, and I, I love the collaborative aspect. I want to know every artist that's been involved in characters that I'm voicing. I want to know every writer that's written characters that I'm voicing. There's a character in U.S. Acres, it's called Orson's Farm in the rest of the world, um, that was part of the Garfield and Friends show. There's a character named Orson who's essentially me as a pig. I'm not a pig, but I play one on TV. <laughs> and uh, that's probably the closest to, to my core. And uh, the Orson character has to talk Wade the Duck basically down from the ledge every episode. So I, I, like, I like characters where I'm kind of the anchor for other less stable characters. 
but I love characters that have anger management problems because I get to chew the scenery. In All Real Monsters for Nickelodeon, they named the name Crumble. Oh, it is Crumb, oh, Lena. You're ready for class, and I'm from your monster books. <laughs> I, 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 like, I like when I can use all my highs, all my lows, all my indicators, and all my temperament. So it's all good. I, 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 I probably should be able to be more specific. I'm really happy to tell you that I can't be, because I love them all for different reasons. So speaking of characters with anger management issues, <laughs> very much. Yeah. Why boy hit my nose? <laughs> so tell us a bit more about Primlock. How did you end up with that role? In that time when I had begun uh, doing animation, I did an audition for Wally Burr, who was the director of not only Transformers but G.I. Joe. Um, he had cast me in a show called The Littles, in a character that was very similar to just me in that time. The same show that I was talk talking about earlier, Wally also saw. He said, I kind of had you pigeonholed. Uh, uh, I like your work, but he said, I had no idea how versatile you were. He said, I'm going to think of you for everything. And he said, I'm starting these, this enormous project where we're casting G.I. Joe and Transformers. And I want you to come in and I want you to read for things. So uh, the, way he, the way he did it, he would keep a number of characters out on the table with breakdowns and he would let actors choose three characters that they felt strong about reading for. Well, I saw Grimlock and it said, the big muscle, small brain. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, that's me! I saw his jaw was hinged. So I, in the early episodes, I, I kind of restricted my jaw. Now I can do it, you know, in my sleep. Uh, and I tried to bring that to it. And uh, I did a panel with Peter Cullen where someone was asking why Optimus Prime rose to the leadership role and Grimlock always wanted to, but uh, sought to do it and, and couldn't. I said, I can sum it up in three words. Ready, fire, aim! <laughs> <laughs> I said, of course, of course, we all hope for measured leadership. Uh, you know, the guy that doesn't fire before he aims. Anyway, it went over well then, it went over well now. It, it kind of is how I define it. And how have you changed the voice of Grimlock over the years? The thing about being an actor and being tasked again with, with uh, coming in every week and you find out the arc of a character while you're doing it, you're kind of learning while you earn. Well, uh, uh, the most notable case in point is when I walked in and they said, oh, you're getting a new brain this week. I said, what? <laughs> I said, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a story arc, just go with us. And some years, it was more for comic effect, in some years it was it was more for just that ability to tail swipe and end any conflict. Uh, so he got all of those aggressive aspects, but then boom, he got a new brain, so we went with that. And so I had to figure out how I Grimlock would sound, as opposed to me Grimlock! Uh, and, and Grimlock has a good sense in the story arc to give that brain to Computron because he's having more fun being me Grimlock than I Grimlock. Uh, so every show that has story arcs and features different characters, you just you you if you're if you're on the ride, you're on for the whole ride, you know. Uh, but to be gifted with not just a job, but a job that recurs, and then the recur becomes a regular, and then the regular goes through seasons. There's going to be changes, and you just go with the flow. I, now we're back to doing what comes next. You know, you walk in, see a new script, and it takes you on a new ride. And for me, as an actor, every time I'm handed a new script, I'm Cinderella going to the ball. I, I, something in my brain, the sensors all activate. I get excited. I want to know what the writer has written, what the artist has lent. 
uh, as clues, and I want to stir it all around and, and figure out what, what comes out of my mouth. And in audition, by the way, I think uh, when I arrived here, I was ready to audition for the role of jet lag, but I'm feeling that <laughs> <laughs> When you go in the audition, and when I teach, which I do here regularly, you want to be prepared, but you don't want to be so prepared that you can't surprise yourself, as well as the people on the other side of the glass when you, when you do whatever it is. And undoubtedly, whatever you furnish, they will, they will want to sort of fine tune and direct. So you have to stay very adaptable. Uh, I know Peter Spellos is, is doing some improvisational workshop. I think that's as important a tool to an animation actor as, as acting is. Um, you have to have both of those things in your skill set so that you can stay in the moment and by the same token, you know, sort of have chops to, to uh, stay disciplined. Awesome. Has anyone beat the uh, improv workshop speaking of that? Yeah? Any good? Yay! And there is a panel tomorrow, I believe, or about um, voice acting. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, it's it's got a catchy title with a character. Teacher, that's good programs. Amazing. Um, so more recently, you've still been voicing Grimlock uh, in games such as Transformers Devastation. I don't know if anyone played that. Yeah. Yeah. Really awesome, uh, like G1 uh, style game. Have you, have you played that? Have you played any of the games? That if it fell to my eye hand coordination to save the world, we're all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but I like watching people in gameplay who actually know what they're doing. So that I've had the luxury of doing and really enjoy watching. Um, and I've been back as recently as Power of the Primes, as Grimlock, and as Volcanicus, who's kind of Grimlock driving the first Dino, Dinobot combiner, which people have only been asking for since the mid 80s. Uh, and now it's happened and it's enormous and the toys are incredible. Um, but to be, to get a gig, to get a job, to get a voice, to become identifiable, to become iconic, all of that is amazing. For them to return to you, and uh, Spyro has just come back to me and I, I've revoiced. Ripto in the Spyro Reignited trilogy. For that to happen after years, or, or many years, or decades, for God's sake, uh, is, is like the greatest pat on the back you can, you can receive. Uh, I don't take it lightly, I don't take it for granted. I am so grateful for, for every time that that has happened. And a lot of it has to do with fandom, who's sort of the missing element of the Transformers universe. Uh, fandom has guided the franchise, fandom has helped with voice casting, fandom has been so loving, loyal, and there over years that it absolutely floors me. I've done conventions as far away as uh, Australia and New Zealand now, flown 9,000 miles to have people waiting at my table when I get there. It blows my mind in the best possible way. Absolutely. Contracts, guys. <laughs> Keep those cards and letters coming in and emails. No, they read them they, and they consider them. And they know that that they've got a fiercely loyal fan of them. Like few franchises. So of all the different franchises that you've been involved with, which is your favorite? Slightly biased question. Just from longevity, it, it, I mean, it's Transformers. It's yeah, I would have to include Garfield in the same breath. They're just they've involved so many years of my life, wonderful years, creative years. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I believe that you also, amongst all your acting uh, antics, you've also written a book. Is that right? I have. Uh, I have. Think globally, act vocally, um, and it's 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 really chapter one of something that will be expanding and is expanding right now. Uh, but I'm trying to 
record and uh, just uh, uh, memorialize a lot of the things that we're talking about today. Um, there's clearly an audience for it because every time I reprint it, I sell out of it. I don't have it at my table today, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I love it, and I, I feel like, and this, this is true, I'm kind of a bridge between the classic voices uh, that I grew up with and the newer voices that, that continue coming into the fold. So I think uh, I have a voice which, I mean, a literary voice, which, which has an audience, and I, I'm really enjoying writing it very much. Awesome. So when did you launch that book then? It's, it's never stopped launching, but uh, it first happened probably eight years ago. Uh, but I realized uh, that it's not telling the whole story. So I, I'm continuing, it's continuing to evolve, and I really enjoy the process. We have, a, we have a poster at our house that says, go to your studio and create something. Uh, and those are great words for anyone who considers themselves a creative anything. You know, it doesn't happen by sitting and waiting for the phone to ring, but there's always something that you can do to encourage the phone to ring. Uh, if you're if you're creative, create. You know, uh, that that's that's how I feel about it. So, because I want to jump up. <laughs> <laughs> If you're, if you're an artist, uh, make art. If you're a photographer, find that image. If you're a writer, make sure that you describe it correctly. Uh, whatever it is, do it, do it to the best of your ability. And endeavor to exceed expectation, and you'll surprise yourself. And then, not only do you talk about what it is you'd like to do, if somebody asks, you point to the shelf and say, oh, this is what, this is what I've created today. And suddenly you exist. This one it is. Here it is. Okay, I think we're going to essentially open up the panel to some questions from the room. So if I could get a couple of questions. So if anyone can get some questions, we'll try and get through as many as you can. Yeah. I learned things answering questions. So, oh, there's a lot of answers. Stop, stop, right here. For Grimlock. Is he a bozo or is he a king? Me Grimlock, no bozo, me king! <laughs> and thank you for your question. I hope that was clear. That, that was a very simple question. <laughs> that was great, thank you. Whatever. Sorry, what was the question? Hey, hey. Can you please tell us about your experiences working on Transformers the movie and how that differed from working on the series and how it felt uh, seeing and hearing Grimlock on the big screen as part of that experience? It was, as recently as last summer, they recreated a big screen experience for the 86 animated feature. Uh, and he, the audiences that I was part of uh, were full, people were throwing popcorn, people were saying the lines. It was almost like a Rocky Horror Picture Show <laughs> at, at this point. But originally, to see it big screen, and big screen required a big story, and I'm going to say that was a feature about robots uh, that, that you could care about. In a, in a larger sense, I, I think uh, if you don't care about the characters, you don't care about what happens to them. I think in that feature, everyone was, was so carefully delineated and differed from each other that you could really jump on. And Grimlock with Cup, and Grimlock uh, with Blur, and Grim, all these different relationships. But what you don't know at the time you're doing it is that nearly everything that came out of Grimlock's mouth became a catchphrase. <laughs> uh, every, I mean, cesium salami, beryllium baloney. Uh, uh, God. Why do I hit my nose? Uh, Much better! All of them. Uh, in the process, so many animated features now are almost like recording in a vacuum because they don't want people to overlap each other. They are so concerned about keeping every track clean that more often than not, you're in the booth 
where the relationship is between you and the director, they sort of paint you in and out of scenes describing what's happening around you. Sometimes you're the first person in and you're talking to people that you're, aren't even recorded yet. That's now. Then, and to his credit, and I believe that Wally Burr, he was very firm about what he wanted, but look at the longevity of what he created. He was right. Whatever, whatever galactic universe he saw in his head, he, he brought to life. And, uh, you know, the, the digital technology may have improved, the imagery may have improved, but boy, you'd be hard pressed to find a better story to sort of go along with. So he insisted that they set up kind of an octo octopus mic microphone so that there were several uh, abilities for people to record at the same time. And he wanted everyone who was in a scene to be present at the time. He wanted us to all play in the same sandbox. He wanted that energy to be contagious, and, and he got it. Uh, Jeff Nelson uh, is, had been a, a strictly an on-camera actor, uh, on-screen actor, and he had a lot of problems speaking to a microphone, and uh, he said, I don't know how to do this. And so we took turns being on the other side of the microphone, as long as he had a pair of eyes to look into, uh, he was Robbins. It, was, it, it just it happened that way. But as, as an on-screen actor, he wanted someone to look at, and it completely solved the problem, which that, that's a happy memory. I was there the day that Orson Welles arrived to do Unicron, and uh, we weren't allowed in the studio, uh, so we were all, there was a Wally Burr South and Wally Burr North. We were all at the window of Wally Burr North, watching uh, Orson Welles arrive in Wall, at Wally Burr South. Uh, you know, there's, there's a million happy memories associated with it. But when you take something from the small screen to the big screen, everything about it has to um, augment, enlarge, amplify. The story has to be a big screen story. The characters have to have a big screen sort of presence. So, you know, I, I think that was the first animated feature that I did. So I sort of learned that as it was going over. Those were the notes that I was taking, and that's my answer to your question. Thank okay, you. Um, I want to laugh at that. Would you like to have voice for Lock in Transformers Age of Extinction? And is there the possibility of you voicing him in future live action movies? They need only ask. <laughs> I would be there so fast that I wouldn't need a plane to get that. <laughs> 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 that would be cool, you know. I, I, I would love uh, for that to, to happen. There's, it's utterly out of my control, but uh, yeah, you're so good. Okay, you want to go that? This one? What do you voice from Rock when he created, when he created, uh, when you got any brain? <laughs> It's cool. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. I'm right with you. When do you voice the episode when Grandma got a new brain? Well, how did, well, how did you exactly well, think? Was it the script that was telling you, okay, I'm alone, Grandma, I have proper grammar now? <laughs> or was it just you thinking, Maybe I should change that. Maybe it was it self editing of the script? It's a combination of all of the above. Uh, I realized I had to up my IQ by 500 points. <laughs> <laughs> that causes you to do things differently. I realized that I suddenly had no, uh, no problem putting my grammar together. But that's scriptural. And that was also the director. And that's also me. And it's also the artist. And it's also. So it's a collaboration, but when you see it, you have to, uh, they, you know, they fiddled around, they wanted, they wanted to hear different things. Honestly, in my head, I kind of pictured uh, uh, 
Kelsey Grammer is Frazier, kind of, <laughs> and I think we're sort of kindred spirits anyway. We are from The Simpsons. Uh, Kelsey does a character named Sideshow Bob, uh, but he's never, uh, he's usually so busy that he's not available for table, table reads and recordings. So whenever Sideshow Bob appears on The Simpsons, I do the table read, I do the record, and I try to kill Bart Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> his character, and so he comes in and uh, does, in post-production, he lays the voice back. But I had to sing for him and uh, read for him. I, you know, and I love the association, and I get invited to all the parties, and I get all the Christmas gifts. <laughs> <laughs> and all the people in the cast are my friends from way back, so that part's great, too. Uh, but honestly, I did borrow from that. Uh, he should be very flattered because when I lifted my uh, IQ by 500 points, I ended up there. <laughs> At any rate, it's a combination of all of the above. It's a great question. Uh, I can't say writing wasn't involved, art wasn't involved, and just creativity wasn't involved. We all agreed uh, on what ended up being the voice. Thank you, and I wish you well for that letter attempt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, I okay. It doesn't need quite to be kept. Oh, I okay. You have a question about that? I don't agree. Hey, hey. Um, so, um, another character you uh, voiced was um, the Great Jet from Final Fantasy X. Well, somebody had to teach that kid to play Blitzball. <laughs> <laughs> Jack was firm, but fair, but firm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're not crying, are you? Um, so my question is, um, because Jack was like a much more aggressive character, um, how did playing him than compared to playing someone like Grimlock? Uh, you're asking the right person because I, the most important thing to me is to be remembered as a good dad, as a good husband, as a good son, as a good brother. Uh, my take on Jack is totally paternal and uh, he is aggressive but I always endeavored to make him aggressive for a reason, that I was trying to help a boy become a man. I did it in Final Fantasy in every wrong way, and a few right ways, but, but that's where I was coming from. So Grimlock represents only Grimlock, and Grimlock sees himself as superior to a lot of people who may mentally be his better, but he doesn't care. So I love all of that, but I also love the paternal nature of Jack. And if it didn't sneak out in some way, then I didn't really uh, succeed. But that's, that's where I was coming from, uh, was trying to help him evolve. Okay, we've got a question over the side here. Uh, hi, great. Hey, Mel. Uh, many years ago, when I first met my son, I bought a CD from me, and you may call an audio book, you know, just talking about how you did your work and how to get your voice out, similar to what you're doing now. And there's something you said that I've never ever forgotten, I've always, I've always wanted to ask you about. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a, there's a very sweet story you said about, I think there's, there's concerns, I think it's about your daughter. You said there was some, I'd like to ask about it. Let me tell them the story first. Uh, yeah. When my daughter was okay. four, my daughter would would disappear with a sketch pad from the time she had a sketch pad and could hold a pencil. She was between four and five years old, I'm guessing. My aunt was looking over her shoulder and she saw her drawing and she said, Oh, you're going to be an artist. My daughter, at four and a half years old, looked back over her shoulder and she said, I am an artist. <laughs> As a 
can get more clear than that. Well, no, okay. there was a follow up. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, the question I the question I wanted to ask you on that. Thank you. Very yeah. Much, because um, it's nice to know you know what I was talking about. Yep. I was just wanted to ask. Um, I was wondering if perhaps maybe you could speak more about that. And it, it, it made me think about uh, something I'm into personally, I don't know if you've heard of it, called the Law of Attraction. And your daughter pretty much did, did, did that very same thing where she, said, where she said, I am an artist. And she's already envisioning it before actually becoming and drawing it to her. I don't think that. she was envisioning it. I think she was claiming it. Yeah, There's a difference. Yeah. I think, yeah. And the question here? Sorry, I delegated to the boy in my arm. I told you I'm <laughs> turning up. <laughs> um, Greg, I think you're uniquely qualified to answer this question. I just punched myself in the face with it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hurt your nose? <laughs> Why do I hit my mouth? <laughs> um, Greg, yeah. if, if, you're, if you're okay. Um, <laughs> what do you think the Dinobot combiner would actually sound like? But he already does in Power of the Primes. It's Quinlock at the controls! He's augmented, he's overbearing, he's big, and he's got, it's like if you, it, it's, it's Grimlock on steroids, that's what it is. <laughs> he now gets to borrow from all the other Dinobots, and boom, that's great fun. Uh, and the um, if you could choose any of your friends, uh, voice actors, to play Grimlock, who do you think would make a good take of it? My friends, Fred Tabashore. I would say. Uh, yeah, he and I sort of tread the same one of her. And, and, you know, there are all the people who came in at the time I did, and then just like you as audience, we as industry sort of embrace the best of the best as people come up. And it's kind of thrilling, honestly. Uh, Jason Marston is a magician for, for younger stuff, other stuff. There's, there's so many great people now. Robbie Damon is fantastic. Um, I mean, it's a long list, but but Fred covers that waterfront pretty, pretty good. <laughs> uh, also, but here's some uh, animation trivia. G1 Megatron and G1 Grimlock are also currently the voices of Garfield and Odie. <laughs> Win your trivial pursuits. Uh, and it says something about vocal versatility. Frank Welker is now the voice of Garfield. We lost Lorenzo Music seven years ago, and Frank did it as an absolute homage to, to Lorenzo, but he's also made it his own. Anyway, that's, I, I think that's pretty cool. And the question I was going to ask is this t shirt played by somebody here, and he's actually done you know, this t shirt for the convention. And you don't have to say this out in the public if you don't want to, but basically he wants you to get you one of these t-shirts to you, but you'll need to know your size. I've given him my size, right. and he got the t-shirt to me, and I can't wait to wear it. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, am I over here? Oh, sorry. I can't, can't see Hi Greg. Hey, hey. Um, in recent years I've become a father and so I've been watching lots of Disney movies repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly. <laughs> if you give it five years, you'll get to watch HBO again. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in some parts of the credits, when you get to additional voice actors, I often see familiar names such as Mr. Greg Berger. Wouldn't that be nice? It is, it, it is. is. Yes. But I'm, you are Mr. Versatile, but I put my trained ear out and sometimes maybe I think maybe that could be. And then equally maybe you recorded something and it doesn't make it. Can, can you tell us a little bit about what these sessions are doing, additional voices is like, and do you ever find out if you've made it or do you just come to the cinema and go, oh, there's me? Uh, well, additional voices is usually a group of us that are all versatile but also disciplined and what we're doing is filling in a lot of the background voices like Monsters University, uh, uh, um, what's the one with the minions? Uh, do you want to... Thank you, three, uh, but, but several. We'll, we'll be called in, we'll be there for a day, and they'll say, there's a crowd here, we need 
the third from the left, the last from the right, the guy who screams down as, as they're going through. And we cover things. And sometimes we cover more than things. Sometimes there's two people just out of frame that are having a conversation and they want something to uh, um, approximate that conversation. So you go up in groups of two. Sometimes there are uh, people, they'll put us in a circle and just have us improvising as we go around. They'll describe a scene and have us making comments about the scene. And then they'll place them however they wish to place them. So obviously it's, it's, it's a great place to be. It's a wonderful thing to have your name on and attached to. Uh, but I try to pick myself out also. And sometimes I can, and sometimes I can't. But uh, you know, those are great rooms, very festive, and you're in the presence of, of uh, these extraordinary creative people. And that's where I seek to be. That's what, that's what feeds me. You know, go where the food is, and that's what I try to do. Uh, question, make that better. Hi, Mark. Okay, so. Hello, hi. Yeah. Um, so I've kind of got a barrel question. Um, so uh, the first part would be, in regards to like uh, Rimmel's uh, like statements he says. Have you ever created one? So has it always been the writers, or have you gone, actually, no, you're not really just listening more like this? I really uh, respect the writers. And like edited or put something through it to make it more robotic sounding. Or, I mean, the growl from the movie itself sounds like you, but then it has something else going on in there. To the best of my ability, you know, they may augment in some way that happens in post, uh, when I hear it, I, I believe it's it's very true to me, and I try to inflate myself to the size of, of that character. Um, so I don't know. I, they certainly have the, the 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 right and sometimes the reason to do that. Uh, there may be a little. I think they may add something that kind of gives it a metallic kind of cling uh, clink. Uh, but I don't know. That's all outside my hands. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we've got about time for you. Well, there's three more questions. You can try and keep it quite brief. Uh, so you've got one at the front here. The lightning round. Now we're just going to fire. 
<laughs> fire in the sky, sky fire. If you remember, he was uh, created Decepticon, best friends with Starscream, he lost in the ice, rediscovered by Autobots, and he didn't know who he was. Uh, he, he had to figure out what was important to him. I actually, I actually love that part of early Transformers because he's kind of got a moral dilemma and uh, he's attempting to choose wisely, which he does. Okay, I'm afraid that's all the time we've got. Um, all the questions we've got time for. Great questions. Um, we've got one last thing that we're doing with all of our voice actors. Come on, so we've got a very quick fire ten questions. So you've got to just give us the first answer, pretty much, that you can think of. So, what is your favourite word, Greg? Favourite word. Favourite word. Uh, create. Nice. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your least favourite word? No. PG. PG. <laughs> uh, again, PG, what turns you on? Don't miss something good. Scripts. <laughs> and then, um, off the back of that, what turns you off? Bullets. <laughs> Um, what sounds do you love? Uh. <laughs> 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 and what sounds do you hate? No. <laughs> I like you, Squid. Okay. Um, what is your favourite PG, please? Curse word. Darn! <laughs> What profession other than yours would you like to have if you have any other profession? Teacher. Woo! Uh, and what profession would you ask Not an electrician. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. And then, very last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Nice job. <laughs>